Hello. Hi. How are you? I have some questions. Hello. Hi. I have some questions. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Sorry, my mouth is having a midlife crisis. Um, yeah. So, I was curious, what sort of repairs are being done on this section here? So, right now we're just looking at patching this uh, come this summer. Okay. Um, along with the slurry seal. Okay. Um, there's larger stuff that obviously has to happen in this uh, corridor Absolutely. right here. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to figure out just what to do with the Riverside slope. Ah. Uh, one of the challenges that we're going to obviously face is uh, going to have to permit it through the Truckee Water uh, Conservation District um, and uh, probably get involved with Army Corps if there's anything that's really large. Uh -huh. um, but at this moment, right now, we're looking at doing some patching and repairing. I think. Uh, the ARPA funds that we've got, uh -huh. uh, looking at putting together an entire study for the rest of the entire corridor, right? Uh, to come up with a plan of attack. Okay. So, but what's the plan for? Like, what do, what do you need a permit for? Basically, when you're this close to the water, uh huh, um, it opens up a, a large uh, bureaucratic permitting process to do what? Work. What what kind of work? Construction of any variety. Like. A retaining wall or something? Yeah, or? A retaining wall. Got it. Um, anything of that nature. I mean, even if we uh, rip wrap the, the slope back down, throw big rocks down it. Um, so. Right. Okay. Well, I can save you guys a lot of trouble. Uh, this easement for this bikeway is 20 feet. They encroached 10 feet into the easement. And that's something that these party, this party acknowledged along with the mayor who was acting as the, uh, the president of the Redo Redevelopment Agency. Uh, a year after acknowledging the easement that was granted to the city in 1970 something or other, it's been about 50 years, uh, they have to tear up their fence because this is a public easement that they built their pavilion on. So they, the, the, the city for some reason either didn't realize it and allowed it without thinking or something shifty happened. But yeah, there's no reason to go into the green belt because this is protected wetland. So th this entire thing was part of the state legislature act between 1973 to 1976 to protect the green belt. Um, obviously there's erosion happening here, but the easement actually They built the fence because there's a lot of homeless people here, but this actually is a public easement. If you look at the track map on the Washoe County Assessor, they encroached on it. So you don't have to do any work for this. All you have to do is just put a guardrail and then extend this to the required 10 to 15 feet that the rest of the path has. Yep. So it's going to be a big legal battle because the, the city fucked up. But I'm yeah, I'm pretty certain though that uh, like this concrete wall. Um, Which one? This one right here. That, uh, that's attached to this, basically this bad boy right here. Yeah, they erected that in like 2017. Uh, this no, that, this concrete wall has actually been here since the construction of this building. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. You're talking about this thing, not this yeah. thing. Yeah. You're no, right. You're right. This thing showed up in 17. The, iron, right. the wrought iron showed up in 17. So the concrete wall showed up in correct. the part. In, in the deed that I read, and I can bring it up on my phone, but in the deed that I read, it states that the city has the rights to oversee and authorize any quote unquote improvements to the public easement that are made. Now, they first, when they first erected this building in 1989, they started encroaching from the very beginning with that dumpster. Now, the dumpster originally didn't have a retaining wall built around it. That was, once again, to protect uh, you know, it from being you know, dumpster dived. But that's in the easement. All of this is in the easement. It's been in the Prior to this building being erected, this has been protected and, and kind of uh, not, it, it was granted to the city as part of this Greenbelt project that goes all the way to Vista. So there's no need to mess with trees or, 
foliage or anything. We just have to make the path wider going this direction. But the auto, I don't know what they were thinking. I don't yeah. know if they, I, and I don't know we, who. We who, are still going to have to do, because I mean, basically, if you, you know, the guardrail's not, the I mean, guardrail's like, a good start. I mean, like, right here. Yeah, the guardrail's a good start, but time and, and water, the roads, everything. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, the other thing, too, is that underneath here is the Cochran Ditch. I don't yep. know if you're aware of that. Yep, so, very aware of that. That's, that's <laughs> pretty much the only thing that's keeping part of this up, is the Cochran Ditch. There's a, an encasement entombed underneath subterranean, but this, that can all be removed. All that they got to do is just push their fence back. They built their parking lot on the easement. I mean, that's, that's kind of grotesque, really. <laughs> So I'm just trying to save you guys some work. I don't know if, say, I didn't know if you were aware of that little trivial, you know, thing that I guess the Reno Redevelopment Agency, I don't know who authorized them to put this up. I mean, they obviously have to go through the county to do this because anything above a certain level of feet, you have to get a permit for, right? Yeah, so we permitted this. And I heard that there was a lot of turnover in the redevelopment agency so maybe they just didn't know what they were doing they could be could have been a mistake but yeah all of this it's the green bill is supposed to be so this is private property here unlike once you get past the uh the, the once you get past, once you get to broadhead everything becomes public property uh, and the setback is supposed to be 150 feet. That's why it gets wider over there. This is going through uh, private property, and so does the, the, the parcel next to it where the Virginia and Truckee uh, Rail Foundation is, which I would love to have the historical marker on because I can only imagine someone saying, oh, well, we gotta get these granite blocks out of the way. There are no, no They've been here since the 19th century. They're a historic landmark. The, 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 the railroad used to go across here. So that's all I'm saying is that, you know, you might wanna, I don't know, what's your department are you with? Public Works. Public Works? Okay. Yeah, what was your name? I'm sorry. Hans. Hans. Okay, well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. I've been talking with uh, the mayor. But um, clipping on it, um, it's but technically animal. The schedule's got mixed up and, and the schedule never got to the schedule in the end. But, uh, yeah, we were talking about networks for micromobility. And, uh, uh, I mean, this is only one section that's a problem. There's a lot of other sections. I actually have an idea to get where instead of dealing with this, just have a footbridge go from right here to right there because the truck is on the other side of that least bridge. And that's safe for demolition eventually because it's too low. And uh, Katie, uh, not Katie Harrison, uh, uh, Peter Koski, she would agree to me that, yeah, that, that that could be improved because there's a stairway now. Mm -hmm. Yep, very very a stairway too. And, yep. a, and a private easement that's uh, through AT&T's property. Yep. No, no, no. The, the next property. That's where it's to, 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 to the restaurant. The stairwell. Yeah, it's right next to the restaurant. Yeah, but then AT&T's property and the uh, I think it's called the Esplanade. That kind of feature where you walk underneath the over, overpass. Yeah, I'm talking about the one next to it, where the, 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 the uh, thing is starting to lean down and starting to sag into. The, yeah, but the whole, uh, if you look at the, if you look at the fence over there for AT&T, next, and then you compare it to the one for the, uh, for the Italian restaurant that we see here, we're like this. So this whole thing is starting to sag into the river. Kind of probably want to have a structure over here like that, because, but then you got that, that stairway. And then, if they raise the bridge, I figured, okay, if you raise the bridge, you won't have to have the stairway, you can have it go directly across, right here into public property, this is probably going to end up being condos someday. High, high end rent real estate. And since they're thinking about making that edge path go all the way up to the Karen, figure right here, we have a monument for Chinatown, that will help it to sit in the park and go right to the corner. And then have a footbridge that goes across here to Auto Museum Drive. And then you could either go east or west from there, or you could go south and get to Holcomb and take a straight shot down all the way to the Red Experience. And I, I provided a, a Eric. A, What's his name? Uh, uh, he's the assistant city manager. Edelstein? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On Twitter, I showed him my uh, concept book drafts for it. He, he liked the idea. He said he, he, he was hesitant to give his thumbs up publicly because <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to do it on, on Twitter. But anyway, 
I hear that I have a pinnacle fan. I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. But yeah, I mean, it would, because that tree is dying, so that would have to be taken out anyway. Right here, is, this is all public owned land. You can save yourself a hell of a lot of trouble through the, you know, environmental protection agencies and everything dealing with this, where you just, you know, restrict this, don't have oh, bikes even, even crossing the river with pedestrian bridges, that's large, uh -huh. large scale permitting. Okay. Out of state plans, Army Corps again, um, basically all of that. So. Well, which one would be more worth the trouble? Um, that's a great question. And I, I basically what I'm hoping for is that with the, the ARPA study that we're going to be doing over the course of uh, I think this year and next, yeah. is considering all of that and putting all of that in play. Of, you know, I mean, yeah, you're right, the BT um, followed truck, followed Holcomb all the way down. I think. Um, Carson City is even doing a thing to uh, mark that trail out. I think there's a trail uh, group that's going to look to do it through uh, Washoe County or Washoe Valley. Yes. Even. That started in the 1970s and uh, the, the council back then, I looked up the, the history of the uh, newspaper. Uh, the they were having trouble trying to get bike paths down there 50 years ago. The only reason why this bike path ended up here is because there was this uh, council put together by Pat Lewis, who was on the city council uh, team for, uh, for Ward 1. Her name was Pat Lewis, and she got laughed at when she first proposed it, but she said we need to have a council of citizens who ride bikes on a moral basis. Uh, and so she got laughed at at first, but then within a year they had devised the, uh, the Reno Bicycle Council appointed by individual city council member to represent and not only act in an advisory capacity but act as a collaborative capacity with the, the Reno Traffic Engineering Department this was before uh, RTC stepped in. And so directly they were working together to create a collaborative master plan for 20 years. And this was one of the results of it. So this is bike route two. It's not simply just a uh, a recreational path. This is an actual municipal bike path. And so therefore there can't be any, you know, to make it ADA compliant under the infrastructure codes and all that, you're not supposed to have widths that are thinner than a certain amount. It's supposed to be at least 10 feet wide. It's supposed to have uh, slopes that are no steeper grade than, I forgot what the percentage is, uh, the angle. But yeah, this, this <laughs> I, I'd say, hey, guys, come on, move your fence back by five feet and just problem over here to clear it up. Over here too. I mean this part right here could be a bottleneck but it's not as bad as like what six, seven feet right here. Not as bad here. There's no need to go into the protected green space. There really isn't. They just have to move the fence back. It's it's a fence. It's a fence. Now if if it's gonna be like years of legal battles, then I say, okay, screw it over here and then just have a footbridge and that would be more worth it because it would connect directly up with other paths that are closer to where civilization is rather than private property on a, private, on a public easement. I'm just considering all these things, you know. I thought about, for instance, maybe putting the, the footbridge over there, but that's where the outlet and inlet is for this multi-story parking garage. It's funny, they have a bike rack there like someone's going to use it. Because you have a parking garage. It's like, well, who's going to use it? So, yeah, if you put it over here, and then that connects all the way up to the, to the, to the bus station and all that, because over here is a strode. And, and, and Quins Quinsley and Second are, are strodes. Uh, strode is street road hybrid. Uh, yeah, you remember that? Okay, yeah. Yeah, they're strodes. No, no one's riding their bikes there unless they want to you know, get killed. I, I avoid it at all costs. I, this is my car. You know, I, I get around town everywhere. But, I mean, eventually all of this is going to have to be fixed up anyway. It's private property. They're using it for staging and, and for, uh, uh, they're going to use it for extend, extending the, the parking for, the, for the, uh, the baseball stadium for a while. I have a feeling it's going to end up being a really popular parking lot once they finally open it up. Uh, but people will realize this is Chinatown. You know, the whites in 1908 destroyed their entire habitat here. It was down, I mean, you have to imagine what Chinatown was like back then. They were down the river from all the mills and all of the uh, cyanide and everything that they were using for, that's why it's called Mill Street. And then, you know, they had, you know, brothels and everything there. So, you know, all the, the, the people that were part of city council. 
said, okay, well, you guys are out of here. You're going to have to move out. I think it would be cool to have a marker to show, you know, hey, that this is where we disenfranchise minorities and then, you know, have a little square there. So, yeah, I, I have ideas. I'm just uh, trying trying to get people to, to see it's, it's not that hard to do. It's probably going to give you a better product to be more efficient. But, yeah. I think this is a lost cause.
path of least resistance. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> no, you guys are cool. What really affects me is when people are sleeping on that thing. Oh, yeah. That's oh, my God. That's dumb. It's like, uh, I don't know. It's like there's better places. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Good morning.